So hello, lovely listeners. Um, today, it gives me the great honor to be speaking with the wonderful Na Amelie Asante Amar. Na is an utter inspiration. She's a mother of two. She's a lawyer, a life coach, originally from the UK, but now living in Ghana and is on a mission to be the first female president of Ghana. Uh, I love, she's put in her bio, in Ghana, we have a proverb that says, if you educate a man, you educate an individual. If you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Well, as a woman, I'm, I'm going to completely agree with that. So that's wonderful. Um, Nara is also the co-founder of Power to Our Mothers Foundation Africa and works to support women, especially mothers, to empower themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, as once the woman in the home is thriving, then so everyone else is around her, and I can I can relate to that. Um, but um, but more latterly, she's on this path to contest in December 2024 elections to become the first female president. Which, wow, I can't even imagine what that feels like, looks like, um, what the driving force is. Um, but it it sounds unbelievable, especially with what's going on in the world today. So. Um, so welcome, Na. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for having uh, me, Mel. It's a, it's an honour to be here, and um, yeah, it's a it's a lovely uh, Friday. It's nice and sunny for a change. I'm acclimatising to the cold because although born and bred in the UK, left and moved to Ghana, I'm actually back in the UK visiting. So I'm so happy to see the sun today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? It's been a nightmare. <laughs> the, um, so now um, we, you know, the listeners and I would love to hear the journey, really, your your backstory. I know that you were married and, and obviously, you know, and, and now it, you've moved on. So just understand more about sort of what has got you to where you are today. And, and obviously the any pivotal moments that you've had in your life, which has completely changed the tra trajectory I don't know why I keep using that word because I really struggle to pronounce it, but has completely changed the direction of your life. So over to you. OK, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit about the background. I mean, I'm the I'm the uh, the eldest child um, of, of, of three girls that grew up with uh, my parents. And um, I um, I guess I have been in positions of authority, first born child, a lawyer. Uh, this kind of thing, um, social butterfly when I was young, music was my thing, I played the violin, I used to sing in choirs, um, so I like to be out and about there, and I mention all of that to say that being a politician was never in my dreams, no. I kind of came left the field, uh, you know, if you'd asked me way back when um, about getting into politics, I would have just have looked at you thinking, you can't be talking to me. That's completely not, you know, that was not, that's not in the plan. <laughs> so um, in terms of my journey, um, I, uh, so I'm a, a qualified uh, employment lawyer and I practiced in the public private sector for about 16 years. And towards the, the end of, I would say my co active career, because I don't do that so much now, I got to a point in my life where, um, so I, I, got, I got married in 2007 and I have two beautiful uh, sons, age 10 and eight. And um, the, my marriage, um, I would say it started to fail towards um, the, mid, the mid 20s, if that makes sense. And um, really I would say that um, getting to what I call the eye of my storm, quite frankly, I got to a place where I kind of, um, had given up everything that made me me when I got into the marriage. When I when I entered my marriage, I like I said, I, I, music was my love. So I played the violin. I used to put, uh, perform in orke uh, orchestral concerts and weddings and things like that. I used to dance. I like to rock and salsa, this kind of stuff. Go out with my friends. Um, I used to sing in choirs. Like music really was like my lifeblood. Um, and one by one those things seem to have just fallen away and so by the time I had my two children I got to a point where literally nothing I was doing once I entered that marriage I was doing anymore so I, I that's the, the the epitome of when we talk about losing yourself the, yeah that was me I, I was a completely uh, different person and what I didn't realize at the time is that I'd become depressed which would seem really obvious right now, but because I, I literally wasn't doing anything, gone through an, uh, a couple of moves. So I'd moved away 
geographically from my family and there was a bit of tension in the family around um, the relationships like with my husband and between family members so I was feeling quite isolated and when I got to the eye of my storm which which is where um, I literally was saying things to my things to myself at that time like there's got to be more to my life um, it, it was difficult for me to get to that point because I the story I was telling myself is if people were to look from the outside in, they would be saying, oh, OK, well, she's, you know, she's a lawyer. She's happily married, got these beautiful children, um, decent career. And yet that's not the reality I was uh, living. Um, I would say that I had had bouts and it literally had been bouts, unfortunately, of um, physical abuse in the in, in the marriage and um whilst that wasn't at the, the the mainstay these things um had happened but like I said I got to a point where I just realized that I didn't want to do this anymore whatever this was I got to the stage where I thought no um that there, there has to be more to my life than this mm. and so then when the magical thing is that when you put things out there um I'm thinking this I literally had maybe a few days later um I was checking my Facebook and up pops this uh invite to an uh, invite to an event um from a friend of a friend of a friend or something and at the time this event was called unleash your genius and master your life and the thing that caught my eye was some wording and messaging around discovering your purpose because I literally was asking myself well what am I supposed to be doing with my life now I am a wife, I am a mother, I am this and that, but something's not right. So when I saw that, it really did, um, it spoke to me. So that was a free event, I went along. And I kid you not, I have not looked back since that time because the key thing that I got that set me on my path to either finding myself or creating a new self was the understanding that, well, number one, I'm not broken. And that's the first time that I actually connected with the fact that I literally did feel broken. I felt worthless. I felt, you know, how can I be this lawyer? What I didn't add is that I was in tens of thousands of pounds of debt, not because I was living out with the friends. I was literally just trying to maintain day, maintain day to day living. My husband had a chronic illness, so I was the breadwinner. So um, my reality was on, on some level, I was doing everything or at least trying to do it. And um, just to paint a picture for the audience, because some of them may relate, is that my day at one, my day on a number of days looked as if I'd wake up, get the boys ready, drop one at nursery, drop one at school, go to work, pick one up from nursery, pick one up from after school club, get home, feed the boys, make sure my husband has been felt, um, fed because he too, um, due to his illness and things to so make sure he's been fed put the boys to bed fall asleep putting the boys to bed wake up at one two three four something at o'clock in the morning thinking oh my gosh I haven't done the washing up uh, fully clothed um, and then get up and do the whole thing again so that too was thinking no this could not be a life you know so went to this training and um, really getting that understanding that okay first of all first of all I'm not broken there's a reason for all of this stuff and the thing that really got me was that even if I was feeling broken, I don't have to necessarily fix myself in order to create the things that I would love. And I was just thinking that can't be right. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. I need, to, I need to learn more about that. So that set me off on a whole, probably a year's worth um, of training. And I lived by that. And this is what got me into coaching because it was understanding that I did actually have uh, the power and the ability within me to change my own course of life the things that I wanted to do and um, it, it that was life-changing for me because as much as position of uh, responsibility being a lawyer and the like I was actually somebody who I call the egoic people pleaser like I would do everything for everyone I didn't like conflict, anything for a quiet life, easy life. And that was my life. And at this point, I got into a space of, well, no, actually, I need to do the things that I want to do. And I need to get comfortable with people not being OK with that. So yeah. that was a whole journey and a half. Um, so fast forward this training, um, getting into the coaching, because I just thought, 
I, I need to share this with people, even if, if there's one woman that I can help um, get that kind of aha, I can do this, then I'll do that. So I started coaching first everyone and then with women. So I thought this is my experience and now mothers. Um, and what happened in that time was I was starting to develop a picture of, OK, what do I do going forward? The, the first thing came where I um, had this feeling of wanting to reconnect with my heritage. So I'm a, um, I was born in the UK to Ghanaian parents. So my country of origin is Ghana. And I got this sense that, oh, yes, I would like to go and contribute and know my heritage and do something to, as we all have that kind of sense of moral um, obligation, to, to do something to, um, to leave a legacy, you know. But that was all, you know, uh, airy-fairy. I didn't know what anything of that meant. Then I vividly had um, literally a dream in 2018, which kind of consisted of me. Uh, my mother was there, her mother was there, and we were going to, I don't know where, but we were going to um, have, we were going to bathe in the lake. It sounds very biblical, but literally we were going to um, all jump in this lake. And the symbolism was to get rid of whatever wounds, pains, traumas, you know, we were going to wash them away. And I just remember turning around to take my mum and her mum, my grandmother, by the hand. And when I looked back, there was this long line of women. And I mm -hmm. called them my foremothers. It's like all the ancestors were there. And it literally was like, we want to come, we want to come, we want to come. So we all go down to this river, this lake, and we bathe and it's literally like we are cleansing ourselves of all the past hurts all the past pains and the message I got from that was yes there's a lot of generational ills to deal with and we want to get rid of those and then it was celebration because it's like now we're free and so the message I got was that okay I have been tasked to do something in that respect and I still didn't get it I'm thinking what am I supposed to do with that I can go to Ghana but what am I supposed to do with that Fast forward to 2019, and I'm still doing my coaching, working with women, and um, I am approached by a young gentleman who has been looking out for women who are, you know, being inspiring, helping to empower other people, especially women, and uh, we have a conversation, and his journey has all been about helping uh, women in Ghana to remember that, you know, uh, as the mothers, the mother figures, which all women are, you're either a mother or you're a mother figure because you will have someone in your life that you are caring for, um, to remember who they are so that they now start looking after, quite frankly, um, the, the country, the, yeah, the country and the citizens like they do the home. And that so resonated with me. And he literally invited me. He said, you know, you need to come home and um, run to become president and carry this message because um, the mothers need to the, the mothers need to be placed back in their position of respect and because only mothers can give unconditional love so it was so weird but I remember the conversation now and I literally said to him I said I have no idea how this is supposed to work you know politics I don't do politics but yeah I'll do it and that literally was that you know how it was and were you still married when were you still married when you had this meeting? Oh no, I was. So thank uh, no, I wasn't. So sorry. <laughs> Let me backtrack. Um, when I when I attended this one day life changing course, that was in April 2016. A year later, May 2017, I left my husband because I realised that the reason I got into that marriage without knowing was I was seeking validation. Mm -hmm. I have another story. I'm a I'm a um, trigger alert. I'm a I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse, and so I carried a lot of self worth, low self esteem issues, all of that. So seeking lots of validation. My parents divorced when I was age five, so there was a lot going on. And through the learning I did in that one year about understanding my personality, how things came together, and I realized that oh, this is the reason why I'm in the marriage and why things were not getting on because the thing about seeking validation the more you seek it the less you don't find the, the more you don't find it and mm. when I realized that I thought oh no yeah this is this 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 can't work and also what was happening was I was finding my voice 
And that was causing friction because I got into a marriage where I was a I was a very yes person, anything for an easy life. Yeah, let's do what you want to do. And I became that, oh, actually, I do have dreams and desires and this is what I want to do. And they don't actually agree with what you want to do anymore. Mm. So I left my husband in 2017. We got divorced. That was finalized in 2019. So uh, 2018. So by the time 2019 came around, yes, I was um, I was single and um, got this message and said, yes, I will do it. Um, And announced in 2019 Uh, It was very quick. Like I announced in 2019 to my family and friends first that, um, guys, I'm going to leave the UK and I'm moving to Ghana. (laughs) I'm going to run for president. You can imagine what that was met uh, met with. Wow. (laughs) Um, How did you approach approach that with with your husband, though? Because obviously you're taking the children into a different country. How did that go down? So this is the beautiful thing and the powerful thing I've come to learn about being selfish with your dreams. When, when, you have a, when you have like a dream or a vision and it really is something that is, um, I would say, aligned to you. You may say that, you know, it's on purpose or whatever, like it really speaks to you. It's really who you are. Things just have a way of working out. So my, um, for your viewers or uh, your listeners, my my uh, ex-husband was born and bred in Ghana. So we uh, both have that origin. Right. And through our, through our marriage, we did have the vision of at least moving to and spending some time in Ghana because we wanted our children to know their heritage, mm. be immersed in the culture. It's just that when we split, I didn't know how I was going to make that happen because quite frankly, I didn't trust him. Mm. And so, but that was always on the card. So when now I was presented with this um, opportunity or this invitation, I thought, oh, okay. So if I go to Ghana, I can be in um, Ghana with the boys. The father still did want the boys to be in Ghana. He had been asking me if he could um, take the boys to Ghana. Like I said, at that time, didn't trust him, number one. But number two, they were still quite young. And I thought, no, they're, they're, they're still very, very close to me. You know, I need to be you know, around. And what had happened in the interim is that we had we had been immersing our children into the culture. Um, the youngest one went he when the youngest one visited when he was three, four months old, and the older one had been we'd been taking him since he was um, about a year old. So they were getting acclimatized, but much older. So when they were about maybe five and seven, again, one Christmas the father would take them, another Christmas I would take them. And each time at that time now that they were aware they'd come back and they said mommy mommy we want to go and live and wow. I'd say you do realize that living somewhere is different to going on holiday yeah um so so in terms of broaching this with them it was an easy sell because actually I was the last one to the party the father wanted to go they wanted right. to go okay. and I I was not going because well at that time I didn't have anything worked out so yeah. now when I decided that we'll do this and and I knew it would, could make it work. And I said to them, they were, they were, they were, you know, very happy. So that was an easy sell. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I, sorry, I interrupted you. So, okay. No, that, that's fine. So um, announced in 2019, spoke to the friends and family and, um, you know, the, I guess the concerns, um, concerns and queries were around, but you know, born and bred in the UK, been here most of your 40 plus years. Um, I'd been in Ghana as an adult at the most for two months by that time. Politics, you can't do politics. You're too, you're too nice. People will just take you for granted. They'll exploit you. You know, um, they had that view of, of me as pleasing everybody. So, and also, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to manage so there were there were there were genuine concerns. Don't get me wrong. So I taught my my saving grace is that I I, I not only do I speak a lot, but I speak to people and I listen to them. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to dismiss anybody's feelings, and I knew that for most of them that it was all coming from a place of uh, of love. You know, they cared, they were worried. You know, so I would try and keep them informed of okay, so this is what I'm doing. This is what it's going to look like. I you know I tried to keep, include them as much as possible um, on the journey. So that was September 29 that I kind of. You've gone on mute. You've gone on mute. 
You're on mute. Um, so I announced on 29, in 2019 that I was moving to Ghana. 2020, 10th September 2020, I touched down with the boys in Ghana. What happened in that time was COVID. Lockdown, the original plan was that we'd go in April 2020, I think, at least to visit and set a few things down. But lockdown occurred in uh, March 2020, you know, schools closed, Ghana closed its um, Ghana closed its borders. So then it was the waiting game. When can we go? When can we go? And, and before that time, we were phasing things. So made an announcement in 20, let's see, September 2020, 19, no, September 2019, October 2019, I went there, scoped a few things out. Um, and um, um, also get got to meet you know the person who'd given me the uh, invitation who is my soulmate now you know we are we are the 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 the, the force that are, that are driving this thing and um, went back at Christmas 2019 uh, deposited a few things you know with the children let them have a look around um, and things like that so 2020 was still getting ready keeping up to date with okay what's happening with the pandemic now um things starting the border starting to open up and then we arrived in 2020 and so 2020 to now has been an interesting journey um a lot of it has been about transitioning acclimatizing you know now I'm on the ground ground I had an idea but now I need to see almost test that out you know now I'm here I need to see okay so um where I'm living, what are the people like, you know, what is the reality on the ground, how does the reality on the ground differ from what I've been seeing on TV and hearing from people, so a lot of it was about, okay, let's live, let me see how this works, yeah, um, and in the meantime, what else has happened, um, in oh. the meantime, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, so this guy that, that is now your soulmate, mm -hmm. what, what was it that, attracted him to you to even bring that up what was it that made him say what he said and, and obviously it, it touched a nerve somewhere because you didn't go oh that's ridiculous <laughs> fantastic question he, he he had been seeking out women who would carry this message that he had he would say that he had um uncovered that uh, the community was calling out for he was looking for uh, a woman who would speak that message if you like take that message to the masses so he we connected via my coaching um page can't speak uh, through my through 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 my um co uh, coaching account on instagram right. that's how he found me and it was a dm and the funny thing was he had DM'd me, I think in the May, and I'd never seen the message until um, maybe August. And then I saw that message and then realized, oh, he contacted me three months before. So wow. everything in divine timing, very strange. And um, so we arranged a conversation and um, I was asking about what he's doing and the journey that he's on and uh, yeah, why he reached out. And he said, yeah, he was looking for women who um, were, talking about inspirational things they were look they were seeking to uplift other women empower other women and um, that's that that's where it came from so it was finding out about a bit about me what my vision is um if I'm Ghanaian obviously uh, and that's where it came from and to answer your question about yes how did I answer him and um in terms of what are you talking about this is the other thing about I would say about when things are really aligned to you is that they may say on one on one level they may seem really strange but the things that he was saying to me I didn't have that reaction like are you crazy I, I just didn't have that reaction my mind went to I don't know how this is supposed to work but something is telling me that I'm supposed to be doing this that was the the kind of reaction and maybe it wasn't so 
foreign in the sense that remember a few years before I'd already started having this feeling about okay I need to go oh I want to contribute to uh, Ghana in some way yeah. then dream about you know with my mom my grandma and the other four mothers and then this so I think energetically it, I was being sensitized to this thing that was uh, coming so that when it landed it actually didn't seem too crazy yes the politics that I was thinking yeah me and politics what is that politics yeah like not at all and the thing I'll say about that and where the, the space that I'm definitely am in now is it is how when you look at the world I think the world over there are a number of things that we need to reframe and one of those things is when we think about politics, yes, we have the stigmas and the stereotypes and not just stereotypes, the things that everybody's living the, the um, effects and impacts of in terms of the side that it's dirty, you know, it's fraudulent, it can be really tough, all of this stuff. When you strip it back to basics, politics is life. Like everything, everything is, is politics. And the mothers and the mother figures, the women, we are the most natural politicians in the world. I, I, when I speak about this, I say to people, so I'm a mother currently of, you know, of two, of two boys. And I already wear the hat of several ministries. I am the minister of food and agriculture. I <laughs> sort food. I feed my children. I am the minister of health. Whenever anything's going on with the boys, you know, mummy has to sort it out, whether it's to take them to the GP or what remedies do I have in the house? I am the minister, um, or I definitely used to be the minister of transport where the boys need to go, I'm taking them, right? I am the minister of finance. You know, we need to, we need money to operate what's going on in the house. <laughs> um, I'm the minister of maybe of the interior. I've got to mediate these, um, you know, troubles and fights and squabbles between the siblings. Like, and every mother does that without yeah. even thinking. So we are the natural politicians, the natural diplomats. And for me, it's this realization that we, of how much we divorce the things that we naturally do as women, as mothers from this world view. Because of course, people will say, oh, well, just because you can run a household, it doesn't mean you can run the world. And I'm thinking, hello, our home is a microcosm of yeah. the world. I, me running from president, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be doing, doing, doing everything. I'll have a cabinet. I'll be, have people that will be helping me that, you know, I can give instructions to, directions to, that will advise me. It's a collective thing. And one reason I'm very passionate about speaking about mothers and mother figures first before women, I know it could be triggering in some respects because I know that a lot of us um, have maybe traumas and things that, that the women who want to be mothers and you know haven't been able to be mothers the women who have lost children like there's so much there can be so much trauma um, tied to that however as women as yes as women with wombs literally that one of the most important lessons I would say I have learned because I used to assume well yes every if every woman has a womb she's got to give birth to children and I learned that, but no, we give birth to many things. Children are one, one part of our, our creation. Our, um, our womb as women is also the seat of our creativity. It's where we birth a lot of our ideas, our concepts, everything else. So every woman I look at as either a mother or a mother figure. And what I say to people is you show me a woman and show, especially if you can show me a woman that is not caring from, for someone somewhere in her life, it is what comes. And I, I love to emphasize this because I think this part of us has kind of been disabled, you know, and I don't like the fact that in society, some women are even made to feel less than because they don't have children. We all have that mothering quality, even though I know some people and because they've said to me, um, they may say, oh, but they're not maternal. They're not maternal. And the maternal, the maternal aspect is not, like I said, necessarily in you um, giving birth to children. I was maternal before I gave, uh, um, gave birth to children. Um, people would ask me, you know, ch children would be around me. And the way that I was so comfortable with them, they said, do you have children? I said, no, because I, 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 I didn't, you know, and you'll find women like that all over the place. 
Yeah. Some of us are disconnected from that because of life, because of the messaging we've been told, the conditioning we've been through, the trauma we've been through. As women, a lot of us have been through a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, the concept of the mother and the mother figure is the most uniting one because everybody has a mother or they had a mother. And I would like to believe, even though recognizing that some of us or some people have very strained relationships with their mother, I would like to believe that most people would like their mother to be in a good condition. And when mm -hmm. mum's okay, everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, that is the message rather than men versus women and this so-called battle of the sexes, that's not helping anyone. No. Can I ask your, your soulmate, what's his name? His name, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm going to keep that. Um, I'm going to keep that. Actually, there's many of them. So um, his name is, actually, you, you, you can call him uh, Francis. Francis, okay. Yeah. Where did his vision come from? So he was looking for inspirational women. He found you through Instagram and maybe some other women that he approached as well. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did he do that? His vision, I would say, is driven by his own trauma through the loss of his mother. And the, I would say the, the last message she gave him when she left this world, which was really to, if he wants his life to be okay, he needs to ensure that the women in his life is okay. And that's been his mission ever since. And that is his mission. Oh, I just got angel bumps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so when you when you speak to him he, he he refers to you know all women as his mother even the even the little girls because you know he said well yeah okay she's a little girl now was your mother not a little girl at one point she will grow up to be even if she doesn't have her own children society will look to her to look after nurture other people and I think that's such a beautiful thing I'm not saying that every woman has to have children but like I said I recognize the mothering quality in every woman because they have it without even thinking about it and I think it's the thing that is so dismissed in this day and age you know I look at what we do as women with children not with children in this day and age and for me I say that we perform miracles every day mm. I totally agree um I loved your analogy about I'm the Minister of Finance, Agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. I've never looked at it in that way, but it's absolutely true, you know, and there's always this debate that goes on. Women can multitask, men can't, et cetera, et cetera. And, but it's very true. You know, we've got, I say we've got no choice, but it, it's, it comes naturally. It's just an instinct for us, isn't it? To, to do the, the caring and, and the working and the, chasing our ass and, and all the other bits that we have to do. Um, Absolutely. So, so you made the transition from lawyer to coach. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did the lawyer thing stop and why did the coaching start? And, and, and how did you find those people that, that needed your help? So my, my lawyering has not completely ended. I haven't taken it to the point where, if you like, I've I practice as a lawyer in the um, in in Ghana. Um, I, I can do so. I would need to follow the Ghana bar and everything else. But with uh, the vision that I've got, I'm thinking uh, I need time. <laughs> I need. Uh, I've got lots to do. The journey between from lawyer to coach. Um, I was learning to coach and coaching whilst I was still practicing as a lawyer. That's the, the coaching is like a natural uh, part of me. And mm. when I when I dialed back, it's. Um, the mentoring, the teaching, teaching, like it, it is actually who I am. I've been doing it since I was very young, working with children and the rest of it. Um, so I did get to a point where then it seemed like there was a conflict because um, yes, I was practicing as a lawyer and I was enjoying the coaching much more because I guess it was um, the same thing they say, I think is, um, you know, teaching is twice learning. So it's almost like coaching, um, yes, when I always say when I'm coaching someone else I'm also serving myself mm. so there was that part of me that I would say it was it was part of my natural healing journey yeah. as well serving other people serving myself and that was quite frankly more enriching than me working as a lawyer um 
which I, I enjoyed. I did different, like I said, public sector, private sector, different aspects of that. Um, and it was more taking me into the field of how I, how, quite frankly, how I could help people on a different level. I'm not saying people don't need to know their, their, their rights. They really do. My journey in terms of, and my, my mission in terms of working with other women to help them empower themselves like I changed my language now because you can't do empowering for people like they have to do it themselves so helping them helping us do it ourselves is because for me each and with each and every woman each and every mother that takes one step two step closer to realizing who she is the power that she has it adds to the collective empowerment of us all and for me that's much more imp important than um uh, the practicing as a lawyer that I was doing I haven't said completely goodbye to it like I pick up ad hoc pieces of work and things like that but the other side of my mission is much bigger not from a not from a, um, a recognition point of view but from a human point of view mm. we I'm, I'm someone that says that um, there's no such thing as coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. So there's no such, there is, it's not a coincidence that we talk about earth as mother earth. We mm. talk about nature as mother nature. All of these things, they're connected. And we, especially as womb men, women with womb, men with wombs, women, we are part of nature. And when you look at the chaos in the world, um, the one thing that we know is that mother nature will take care of herself we're worried about the environment and everything else mother nature will take care of herself it's us that's the, the, the human the, the human race that will be you know ejected from this world if we don't if we don't fix up our ways so for me the work of helping a sister even if just one get more on her journey with what it is that she feels she's called to do in this world for me that's a much it's a much bigger and a much more important job the last thing I'll say about the coincidence, when you were talking about, yes, we are natural, it, it is natural for us to do certain things. And remember, I said there's no coincidence. Who is it that dominates the world of and the people in administration? Mm. It's, the, it's the women. So we are the ones who are to, to, to administer the way that the world operates. But because of life situations and patriarchy and the rest of it, the, the shift, you know, it, it, it's, it's shifted, it's lopsided at the moment. So for me, this is a natural gravitation back to how Mother Nature made it. That's it. And so it shouldn't be a competition. It's not a fight. That's why I say it's not about, oh, women can, you know, it's not, yes, uh, men versus women, women versus men, I can do better. Than, no, it's let the people do let the people who have the natural abilities to do the things do the things they're supposed to do that's it mm, totally um <clears throat> yeah i mean i can relate to that you know I, I was in a corporate job for a long time um and i'm i'm now a coach and that awesome. that that came to reality last year because i got made redundant and it's been something that's been permeating for a what you know for quite a few years and like yourself very natural for me from a very young age, you know, um, a listener, I'm a, I'm a natural listener and, and, and all of that. It was having the confidence, I suppose, to like, who's going to listen to me sort of thing, you know, it's all very well when it's friends and family and, and all of that. It's that imposter syndrome, isn't it? And, um, Absolutely. but the universe, you know, gave me a kick up the ass last year and I got made redundant and it came at the same time as an invitation for coaching. So I, I, I went with it. Um, so I'm just interested to know, because obviously you were you were full into the lawyer stuff and you had your, you know, your, your, your divorce and everything, which is obviously quite, would have been quite difficult at the time. Yeah. And, and you said you've now gone to mothers, whereas before it was everyone. So when you sort of try to make that transition, where was it? Who was it you were thinking you were going to help and how did you find them or how did they find you, you know? So it's been, as, as I'm sure you can appreciate, it's been a, a gradual journey. Um, yeah when I started I was coaching both men and women and then I was finding that yeah this calling to work more with women mm. and that was a slow journey like literally I started there was a platform called um I hope this is not seen as advertising but I think um there was a platform called Bidvine you know that you can go and you can find any any kind of uh, 
you know, service that you want. And that's where I started. It's like, oh, and the, the, the benefit of that was that people are looking for coaches. I thought, okay, well, let me start there, you know, um, speak to a few people, um, learn, learn a few things. And um, for some people who don't uh, realize um, <laughs> that the, 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 there is a certain part of me definitely come up, which is, is quite naive and you, you don't quite get there. But in terms of, for instance, being a lawyer, there is being the lawyer and uh, giving the advice, seeing the clients and everything. There's also the business of being the lawyer. How do you get the clients? So I went through this whole thing, same with the law and as being with a coach where I was in the space where I just want to advise the clients. I just want to, you know, do that. I just want to help the coaches. And then you want to do the work. Not, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, that whole thing. Yeah. And that still, and, and that still throws me. I'm just thinking, OK, so you need to get to a position where you can farm this out to other people, because I just want to actually work with the people yeah. who um, need to hear what I what I have to say and help them on their way. So mentor women to women. And then. Uh, it was when I think I got to Ghana that now my focus was African women or black women because I was looking at the relatabil relatability. It's like, okay, well, this is what I've been through. So anything that you say to me, um, I, I get, I, I, I understand. And um, that, was, that was very powerful. That was very difficult because you know what the mindset tells you about scarcity. It's like, oh my goodness, I can't focus on one. I can't just focus on one um, group of people. How will I get enough clients, this, that, and the mm -hmm. other? And truth be told, yes, it has been difficult. It's been difficult to find the people who are looking for me. And what has happened is um, I realized that, yes, it's not just about, okay, you advertise your services here. So there are a lot of other things that I do. I'm on Clubhouse. I speak in different circles, which are um, literally just about uh, some, some about my journey, some about, you know, subjects that... Um, what's the word, Sub subjects that um, uh, resonate with me or would re resonate with them. I used to do uh, live programs where I would talk about women in politics, as that's my journey. I would also talk about reshaping motherhood because the, the, the concept and the ideas we have around motherhood today are very different. And then, um, so talking about it generally and then talking about it, well, what does it look like um, for us if you are of uh, African Caribbean heritage? Um, so the different messaging, you know, in that, some uh, people getting referrals. So that journey hasn't been easy. And I'm, I'm still on, I'm still on that journey. Mm. Um, but, but I realized that it's, I'm building a web. There's a, there's a number of things that are different things that I do. And actually, when I look at them, they all come, they all come together. And um, the coaching, I, I worked with my own coach for three years. And I'll never forget the first time I started working with her. I said to myself, how did I get to this point in life? And I never worked with a coach. I just thought, what? <laughs> how, did, how did I manage that? Because I was thinking, I, I think I recognized that I so need this. I, I don't know what I thought it was. I didn't even really, when, when um, I first learned about coaching, the things I used to say to myself is that what being nice to people is really a thing like giving giving <laughs> encouragement to people is really a thing really oh that's awesome so um not realizing that because I thought but this is what I do and I was like people pay you to do this you know I don't want to underestimate the skill that coaches have but that's where that's where I was coming that's where I was coming mm. from so that continues to be the journey the different spaces that I am and recognizing that the, the latest part of the journey is to stop compartmentalizing myself you know it's like okay so there's the political candidate but it's still me and so you know that still comes to my journey in terms of um my vision because what I, what I do is um really uh in who I work with is helping them to see what's already inside but they can't see it because other people have fed them lots of stories and um what is it that they really want to do and everyone's journey is different and one of my biggest lessons is that if I really want to be, uh, if I really want to serve people, I have to serve myself first. I have to serve myself first, even as a mother. And, and of course, that was the most triggering thing mm. because of the messages we get taught about um, being selfish, as in you've got to give your all to your children. Yeah, you do. But if you haven't topped yourself up, what are you giving them? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. And yeah, I, I resonate with the, uh, the continual journey um, of 
clients and how it evolves and yeah it's ongoing yeah 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 and I'm very much in that at the moment as well um so in terms of being president of Ghana and -hmm. Francis's vision and and where that came from I'm assuming he's dissatisfied with how Ghana is being run managed um He's obviously not alone. I'm not on about Ghana. I'm on about the world. You know, there is a lot of discontent. Uh, I didn't give a shit about politics until uh, April 2020. And my interest is, uh, you know, gone through the roof, uh, mm. sometimes to the detriment of my own sanity. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I'm not alone in that. There's millions of people that are all of a sudden taking a lot more notice of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you're you're on this journey to be the first female president. And what does that look like? What do you have to do to achieve that? Is there a million red tapes that you're navigating to even be taken seriously? You know, how does that look? Yeah, I think you've said it all. There's a lot, there's a lot to navigate. Um, the fact that I was uh, born outside of Ghana, someone will tell you that, well, you know, how are they going to relate to you, you know, speaking the language? At the moment, I, I'm not fluent in my native tongue. Um, will they see me as one of their own because I was born outside? Do I have the same mindset, mentality? And with that, I just say, I, I, I remember this definition, you know, Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. So quite frankly, the, the country has had independence for 64 years. It's always been ruled by men. How do you expect there to be any difference if you don't do something different? So, so if you really want to do something different, then like really do something drastic. So never had a female president, president have one. Have someone that comes from outside the goldfish bowl with no disrespect to my fellow Ghanaian. But you know what it's like, when you are in your own stuff, you lose some objectivity. Mm -hmm. And for me, the, I would say the wisdom of my ancestors, those who traveled and it's like, okay, so we're out in different places. There's a reason and a benefit to having different perspectives. It It doesn't necessarily mean that they're better or worse, but you need different. We need, you need to do something different if you want to create a different result. So, Um, there is as I say acclimatizing with the heritage how am I viewed Um, is the perspective going to be like them will I be embraced there will be the practical logistical things Um, I didn't contest in December 2020 as I'd anticipated because last minute they the electoral commission increased the filing fee to 100,000 cities so they increased it by 100%. 100,000 cities is like um, 15,000 pounds. And I hadn't anticipated that. So uh, I, I am very, I am someone who walks very much by the, the idea that uh, of divine timing. Everything happens as and when it should. So I thought, yeah. okay. And I always said, I'm going to go for it. Um, because So when people tell me, oh, politics, it's yuck and this, that and the other. What I say is that just look at what is happening in the world don't have time for fear does it mean I'm not fearful at times no of course not but don't have time for fear don't have time for these like we'll just have to get over it on the on the way like we need to move now and I am a mother of young boys and I know we say the the children are the future and I'm just thinking but why am I leaving this big burden for my children to get on with like what can I do now I'm here now so let me do whatever it is I can do and try and make it a bit easier for them um so um party I'm planning to run as an independent, okay? In in, in other words, I'm not planning to join anyone. And people think, oh my goodness, you know, just touch foot in the country. People don't really know you. How are you going to run as an independent? I thought, well, that's what I'm planning to do. Unless, because I do say never say never, unless by some miracle, a party reveals itself and the message is aligned. Because I'll say that this is not about me. And I've gone as far to say, and I'll still say that, if by some miracle, a woman comes to the fore and I think that she has the potential to give the country what she needs I will step aside and I will support her because it's not about me like Mm. the message 
is the one that needs to be there. And whoever can best represent that and get what needs to be done done, that's who I'm with. But for now, nobody's stepping up. So I'm there and I'm saying, sisters, you need to come out and join me because like, I can't do this by myself. And when I say sisters, it's not that I'm speaking to the exclusion of the men because obviously my biggest cheer, cheerleader is my partner. And then there are uh, men like him out there who recognize and value uh, the wisdom and the needs for the women in their lives to be doing okay. Um, but I call out the sisters because we often will have, whether or not you have your own children or not, we often have a lot on our plate. And so um, I recognize that not everyone will have the space, not everyone will have the opportunity. I also know and come, have come across the women who they had this in their sights. Some of them got into politics and they had to get out for different reasons. Some of them have been thinking about it, but they haven't had the opportunity or they don't really want to get stuck in this dirt. So I'm saying, yeah, all of you that at one point thought about it, and were, I'm like, I'm calling you now. Like now this is, this is what, when we're going to do, like this is the best time. So those things to nav navigate, <clears throat> culture, um, how they embrace me, uh, moving around the country, uh, finances, like any camp campaign. Um, they're the main things, they're the main thing. Yeah. Okay. And so we're in the end of 21. When does this really ramp up? If Bearing in mind what you've just said, if another woman uh, revealed herself, but if it, if it is you, um, mm. when does that start to become a, a real reality in terms of the ramp up in activity that you're going to need to do it's, it's already started oh, it's, already started. Wow. <laughs> it's, it, it's already started I've done a um a round of so let's see 2019 to 2020 I was quite active um or at least on social media interviews and everything else and um funny like with this December January I'm in cocoon mode um because I'm getting ready I keep saying to people and that, that they shouldn't expect it some people shouldn't expect to see me because um, it's going to be level four, gear four, gear five next year in terms of everything that I need to do, places I need to go, people I need to see, um, things I need to put in place, my team um, who are working with me. So, yes, this is literally not on my on my marks, get set, get getting set yeah. uh, because three years will be here like you know before you know it it will yeah. already be here the last thing i'll say is that um in december i was very encouraged because three women did step up that's the most number of it's three women did uh file to contest presidency in december 2020 so that's awesome because that's the most number that they have had so it's not that they are not women stepping up it's who's going to carry the message that i have because this is not about a message of division and separation you know it, it it is a message of as i like to say the country and the citizens need some mother loving can we please give them that <laughs> oh, wow um I, i've got a, a friend so the coaching that i do on part of the the accreditation is called ultimate contribution that's the program that, that we deliver um but we're part of a bigger organization called toledo one of my peers um, is working with a, a women's group out in Ghana. Um, and I don't know what that looks like. I just know that she's doing some work. Um, and I also know that somebody else within our group is doing work with, with Ghana. And that's how it all sort of came about. So I'm thinking I should connect you to, I don't know whether anything will come from it, but who knows? Um, and Jackie's, you know, our vision and mission is is very aligned in as much as you talked about purpose quite early on in our conversation and that's what we're all about it's about the people that are lost um whether it be life events or um just chaos in their life mm. right now what's happening you know people have been forced to stop and in that stopping they've had the space to think and they've realized that the life they were living whether it be the, the career that they're bored of stuck in stagnant whatever or the relationship you know divorce has gone through the roof I believe um and all of these things that have made us that have given us the space to realize we're not happy where we are and so what we do is we allow them to 
have the self-awareness of who they truly are. And when they realize that, then they start to paint their own vision from that space, as opposed to what they should be doing, you know, should, that horrible word. Um, so, and then it's how they can take that into the world, you know, and it is, a, it's largely about serving, s serving someone, you know. Um, so I know that the work Jackie's doing would be aligned to how you live your life. Um, so if you're, if you're up for it, I don't know, maybe nothing will come of it, but I think it's got to be some kind of not a coincidence sort of thing. So, um, wow. yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, go on. Sorry, no, I was going to say, um, I, I appreciate that. And um, uh, I say that um, I never underestimate the power of a conversation. It could just be one. We yeah. never know where it will it, it will lead. So um, I'm very grateful for you to um, offer that. We, we, we just never know where our paths cross and when we, where we end up. So absolutely. absolutely. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly about what this... Um, what this um, I don't even know what to call it this event I mean the pandemic and everything else what opportunity to a certain extent it has given us to reflect on where we are yeah absolutely well no it's been an absolute joy pleasure inspiration and any other words I can think of um you you are so articulate I'm sure you've been told this a million times before you are so clear in how you communicate um, I just don't see how you can fail to achieve what you're trying to achieve. And, <laughs> um, and I will be keeping a close eye and I'll be like, I know her, I know her. <laughs> Thank you um, so much. <laughs> and um, how can people find you if they want to reach out directly to you? So I am on Instagram under, it's my name up on here, but it, not a melee for president. Not a melee for president. Um, I'll put it in the show notes. So obviously, people, okay. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I I, I am there. I, I'm I am also on uh, Facebook as Not a melee. But literally, if people went in and googled reshaping motherhood, they would see the the live um, the live uh, uh, discussions that I've done. So they could they, they'd also find me there. But Instagram Not a melee for president um, is there. Is um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for the platform. Thank you for the work that you're doing here. I say that without diminishing the work that we do as coaches, I think to some extent, many people, if not most people are coaches to uh, some, some part of their yeah. community. And we need, we, need, we need that. We need people in our circles to remind us of who we are when we forget. And um, you know, also I say, <laughs> call out the nonsense. Well, I say call out the nonsense is like, Tell us when that that other part of us, you know, the ego is kind of getting out of hand and just call us out on our nonsense. Uh, but in love, like we need to be checked in love. So I thank you for the platform. I thank you for all the work that you are doing and the, the words of um, encouragement. And um, uh, yeah, just greetings and thanks to um, your audience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there any final words you'd like to leave with? Any pearls of wisdom or anything? Um, that, that you feel inspired to say? There's so much going on in the world right now. And one of the, the biggest things, the most important things that helps me go through the things I need to go through is um, one of the best lessons I learned was that put all your effort into, you have to be very clear on your vision. Yes, like you can't do anything without knowing uh at least where you're headed at some point if you don't know where you're going you'll get there right so we need to be clear on our vision and the next best thing after that most important thing is um to put all your energy into the next obvious step mm. if i had stopped to think about chart out my a to z from going from a uh, divorced mother lawyer coach uh, to you know leader of a, of, a, of a republic, I wouldn't have taken the first step. So focus on the next obvious step. Um, I know that we're conditioned to, yes, you know, you have to be, you know, you have to be sensible and you have to know, you have to have a plan and everything. But the thing is, when, you, when you've got a step from, a, a, a journey from A to Z, 
when you get from step A and you get to step B, your, va your vantage point might change. It may look different from there. So you've got to be open to being flexible. So just focus all your, like, I would think of it like a treasure hunt. You get your first clue, solve the first clue, get to that place, and then get your next clue, and then look to the next thing, you know. <laughs> so um, that, that, that's what I, I would say. And um, just really... The last thing, this is this is being cheeky, so I'm saying two things is um yeah, let's 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 remember the importance of um, um our mothers and our mother figures, the women. It's not a competition, you know, it's not a battle. Um the, the mother, the women, and I know that we have stories of you know the exception, the the relationships that are strained and everything. Um but we weren't put here to do everything that a man could do. We were put here to do everything that he couldn't. So do that. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love the treasure hunt thing as well. Um, well, thank you so much now. Um, as I say, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I know that whoever listens to this is going to be massively inspired. And, um, and all of us, when listeners are listening to this, are sending you all the love and luck in the world. Thank you so much, Mel. Again, thanks for the platform. And uh, yeah, let's keep going because this work is collective work. It's not one person's going to do it. So um, thank you for all the light and encouragement um, and inspiration that you share. And again, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you.